Now here with Kelly Amonte Hiller, the head women's lacrosse coach at Northwestern. And if you know anything about women's lacrosse, you know Northwestern is one of those power programs, multiple national titles. You've won nine, seven as a coach, two as a player. Uh, a lot of hardware as, as a player and a coach. And uh, not too many Division One coaches end up in this building for something <laughs> other than football or wrestling. So uh, why don't you tell us why you're here in the Fargo Dome? Well, uh, my daughter is a, a wrestler. So I've just kind of fallen in love with the sport. She's um, just starting out in it uh, this year. And she's really loving it. And when she got the opportunity to come to this tournament, we had heard all about it. Um, obviously, I'm friends with Matt Storniola at Northwestern. Our strength coach is a big wrestling guy, Adam Herman. And um, he worked out here at, at uh, Fargo. So he was like, you know, they were all like, you have to go. So uh, we tried it. And it's just been an unbelievable experience. Wow, just so impressive to have this many people in one place. Uh, I'm really in awe. The tie here is, is uh, you guys were working with Wrestling Mindset and Mike Moore. That's how this conversation started. So there's the tie between you know the mindset training. What have you seen between uh, you know like mindset training for uh, lacrosse players and what you've seen from your daughter's experience in wrestling? Well, honestly, um, you know when our daughter was little, she got into the martial arts. She was into judo, a little bit jujitsu, and um, I've just been a huge fan of the individual sports and how hard the mindset is in individual sports and so I've always followed the wrestling stuff like we're huge you know Northwestern wrestling fans we follow all the wrestling in the Big Ten and um, so you know from my perspective you can learn a lot from different sports and in particular I've really dove into wrestling and, and even MMA and some of these sports that you can kind of just learn some of the mindset lessons, lessons that really transcend in all sports and so we've really appreciated our daughter being involved in it and um, you know she's learned tremendous lessons already and there's obviously many more ahead for her. In your experiences in coaching women's lacrosse how many wrestlers have come through uh, lacrosse for you or is it just a rare rare occurrence? Pretty rare. Uh, right now, I think there's a girl on Syracuse University that was a pretty good wrestler. Um, but we just knew, you know, I think we started our daughter in gymnastics and then, you know, some of the, the martial arts and wrestling. And we just knew that those sports would transcend to everything that she did. And, and she actually just fell in love with um, those sports. So we've been really fortunate. And over the years, I've become friendly with a lot of the wrestlers at Northwestern, whether it be, you know, Jake Ebert or Jason Sertzis and, and uh, Sebastian Rivera, Ryan Deacon, all those guys. So, you know, we've always followed and learned from that program quite a bit. From your role as a, as a Division I head coach, a lot of youth sports and stuff, they're getting into sports specialization. So, uh, it, it, even with your own daughter, you're like, okay, we're, we're not doing that. Um, when do you think your daughter, for example, will choose her chosen path and which sport she's going to probably maybe look at at the next level? I would say it's, it's really hard. We're trying to dig our feet in, but it's really hard. There's a lot of pressure because, you know, she's competitive. All these young athletes are competitive and they want to be the best, best and they see certain paths. But I think that, you know, just ultimately, I was a two-sport two athlete in college and and I just really value the experiences that you learn from different coaches, different sports. And so we've tried to expose her to a lot of different things. And, you know, luckily the people that we've been around have been supportive of that. And we hope to continue that. But I encourage all my athletes to, to do that because if, when you get to college and you have to specialize, all those lessons and those, you know, muscles that you developed in other areas uh, really pay dividends. Looking at this year, this is a big year. This is the 50th anniversary of the passing of Title IX, and it's been celebrated by the NCAA. And uh, this is the 20th anniversary of the first junior women's tournament. Uh, the cadets started in 2011. And looking at the opportunities these girls are having with the wrestling mats, where 
now they're going to grow up in a, in a sporting atmosphere that they never knew there never was an opportunity here. What's that like for you as a, as a woman's athlete to see your daughter be able to have these opportunities not held back from her anymore and she can pick any basically any sport she wants and there's a chance for it? It's awesome. It's the whole reason why I'm in coaching because I want to provide a more rich experience than I had and I had a pretty rich experience than all those that you know paved the way before me. So it's huge and I've just been really impressed in wrestling how the wrestling community is really promoting women's wrestling and you know I hope that continues any any woman's sport that can grow and prosper is I think a, a great thing and it's it's pretty impressive to see the athletes out here and just see how fierce these girls are um, it's it's really cool I, I I'd like to get a few of them on the lacrosse fields <laughs> to be honest and as far as you know the lacrosse game, the men's game and the women's game are, are different in, in terms of the level of contact and stuff, but, but what, to that point, from a, a lacrosse coach standpoint, what about a wrestler makes you be like, yeah, I want them on the lacrosse field? I think ultimately it's the mentality, uh, the mentality of, you know, when you go into the match, it's all on you, you know, you have to be focused, you have to be ready, and prepared and and I think that uh, that's a hard thing when it's all on you so I think that and then just the training of wrestling it's not easy you know um, you have to watch what you eat you know the, the whole thing is it takes a ton of discipline and I think anytime you have discipline in your life you're gonna do great things the growth of women's lacrosse has been just gigantic on the college level Women's wrestling, we added two Division three schools with women's programs earlier this week. We're up over 120 on, on all divisions, but what do you think women's wrestling at the college level could learn from what women's lacrosse went through in terms of growth and opportunities, at, you know, specifically Division one? You know, some of the things that we did on the women's side is, is really looking at the marketability, um, really trying to, uh, you know, foster the environment with the TV networks and make rules changes so that our sport was really attractive to the masses. And, um, you know, just being really accessible um, and, you know, inexpensive too. I think our sport is inexpensive. We can play on any field. Um, so there's a lot of components that go into it and really developing the youth. I think, um, you know, you drive down any street, you'll see people playing lacrosse in most areas of the country. And uh, that's been a huge focus of our sport. If you could maybe wave a magic wand and, and make Division One women's wrestling happen overnight, how quickly do you think Northwestern would be on board for having a program? Oh, you know I'm pushing it behind the scenes. So I, I hope, uh, I know Matt's really supportive of it. And, you know, we want to see these other Big Ten schools go and, you know, some of the other Power Five schools. I think it would just be so cool and it would really propel women's wrestling into a new stratosphere. I hope ADs will see the beauty in this sport.